Howdy, everybody. It is Sam Fightful, your host of John Updike's Ghost, your favorite little podcast about New Year's, new books, literature, bookstores, and all things fantastic. I am here once again, as always, joined by my sister, the co-owner of the bookshop of Beverly Farms, an all-around great person, Hannah Harlow. How are you doing today, Hannah? I'm doing terrific. It's a snowy Monday. I'm hopefully for a little bit longer anyway. And I'm just getting over a cold, so I'm oh. feeling better. That's good. So that's nice. Yeah. It seems yeah. like everybody's getting over a cold right now. I agree. And I was pleased that it held off until after the holidays. So I, I can't complain about anything. And all my plans got canceled this weekend because of the weather. Mm. So I barely left the house and I read a lot good job that's great yeah. yeah i'm assuming that i will get this cold uh on wednesday when i am recording with the 207 television program my new new year's song um, i'm sure Excellent. i will get sick right in time for that which will be a giant headache and bummer so i'm not leaving the house i don't want to I was going to say, you just don't go anywhere. Myself. Yeah, well, my son, unfortunately, goes to school. So Yeah, that's where I got my cold from. My yeah, brings thing. home all this poison and whatnot. Uh, but I also have been reading a lot. I got lots of great books for Christmas that I've been... You sure did. ...diving into. What was the uh, first one you read? The first one I read was the new Martha Wells, which I accurately predicted that I would receive uh, for Christmas. And uh, for people who don't know Martha Wells, she writes the... Murderbot Diaries a uh, series of books. Uh, the newest one is called System Collapse. It's very uh, sort of bite-sized is what I like about it. I knew I could read it in a day or two, and I did. Um, Do you know what number in the Murderbot series this is? So I don't, and I actually sort of went into it thinking that I didn't need to have read all the other ones. It looks like this is the seventh one. It looks like uh, I read All Systems Red, which was the first one. And for me some too. Reason, for That's some the reason, only one I've read. Yeah, me too. And so for some reason, I thought like they were all discrete stories. Mm. Um, but this one definitely refers a lot to some stuff that like just happened very oh. clearly in the last So you book. were confused. I wasn't so much confused, but I was like, oh, I guess I should have read that. And, you know, I'm sure there was some nuance I would have picked up on. Um but for people who don't know about it, basically the attraction is what if it was a robot who talked like the most human person you know, but is spending the whole time trying to figure out if they are being human enough. And there's like lots of funny interior dialogue like, oh, make sure you walk like a human right now. The humans are watching, you know, uh, so it's. Aren't they like half human or something? No. They have like organic material and they look, uh -oh. they can pass for human or whatever, Got but it. they are robots. Um, and it's basically the, uh, it's in the future in space. They've populated the galaxy and the like security guys, rather than hiring security guys, are just these like flesh bots basically who uh, have little augmentations and can like. You know, they have the brains of computers so they can think computer fast. And there's lots of, you know, kibitzing about how dumb the humans are. And, well, you know, it's it's entertaining. You know, it's like, right. uh, it's not human centered. It's robot centered. So it, uh, lots of laughs, lots of swearing. If you're not, if you're not into swearing, do not read these books. Um, right. But um, highly entertaining. I, I enjoyed Good, it. It's great. like a nice piece of Christmas candy. What about you? I know you didn't get any books for Christmas, so you're I forced didn't. to self-select. What have you self-selected? So I was on such a good run at the end of the year. I read all these books I loved. Yeah, you're all done. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're still not coming out for a while. But so the past couple of books I read, I actually really didn't like. <laughs> so I know how this troubles you. I've been a little you. bummed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the first one is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. Oh, yeah. He's the author of The Silent Patient. Right, Silent Patient. That ripped right through our whole family. Everybody read it. Oh, see, I didn't read it. 
Neither did I. Oh, <laughs> Kristen okay. did, and mom and dad did. And... Yeah, I mean, everybody loves that book, and and I so I so I read The Fury, and I thought it was straight up bad. Like Is it's yeah, it out bad. now or it's coming out. It when comes I'm... out next week on the sixteenth of January. So probably highly anticipated by people. You're yes. telling them. Maybe not great. I, it's one of those books where I'll have to be like, this one wasn't for me, but you might like it. Um, now, The still, Silent Patient was like a big murder mystery type thing, right? Yes. And I think what he's known for are like great twists and turns, you know, so like right. you're going to be surprised by something. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, he jumped the shark on this one with the twists. Like, Too many twists? They, well, no, they're just ridiculous. Like <laughs> the narrator... <laughs> You know, starts out okay, and then by the end, you, like, really don't like him. He's mm -hmm. a very unlikable, which is fine. I'm fine, fine with that. Yeah, no problem. Except the narrator does things like, okay, so this, so I've been holding back all this information, and now I'm going to tell you what really happened. And you're like, okay, well, that's kind of annoying. Like You were just telling me what happened. Why? You just told me what happened, yeah, so why, why didn't you Were you lying me? before? Exactly. Yeah, so that happens like four times where you're like, okay, well, what fresh information are you going to go back and tell me? Like, just tell me from the beginning. But what's even worse than that? The That's like our least favorite uh, oh, yeah. trope times 10. That's the worst. Yes, it's the worst. Ugh. But what's even worse was at least once, maybe more than that, he starts, the narrator starts being like, okay, so this is what happened. And then says, just kidding. That's what I wished happened. And you're like, uh, what? Like, uh, no, no, no. That uh, is unacceptable. So it's like unreliable narrator meta, like playing yes. with your unreal. It's like a Reddit thread gone bad. Uh. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, the setup, you know, starts out okay. It's about sort of a, a star. She was a formerly famous act. I mean, she's still famous, but she does, she's not acting. She's a retired film star uh -huh. American who's moved to London and her ex or her late husband had gifted her an island in Greece where they have this beautiful house or whatever. Right. So she invites a group of friends to spend the Easter weekend on the private island in Greece. And then something goes and somebody awry. gets murdered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a good setup, right? But by it the end, you're sort fun. of like, what, like, what is even the, like, what is this book about? Right. Like, yes, it's about the the outside story. This, if I were my writing group, I would say the outside story is it's a murder mystery. But what's the inside story? Like, yeah. What are the themes we are grappling with? <laughs> and I could not tell you what they are. Just, you know, it's whether this person's dead. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so I did. There wasn't enough like interior development to make me appreciate the actions of the story. Hmm. That's too bad. It's That's too, too bad. bad. The Fury comes out next week. <laughs> All right. Hey, so what, anyway, are gonna what are you going to do? I, don't I have a book that's coming out soon that I like very much. I know I, right. my ARC experience is, you know, very mixed. I often pick yes. random ones that I don't know why I even read them. This one jumped off the shelf at me. I'm not sure if you were into uh, Lives of the Monster Dogs. Do you remember that book? I don't remember that book. I don't know why I got it or how. Um, it's written by a woman named Kirsten Backus. Uh, she teaches at the Yale Writers Workshop. Hmm. She wrote that book, uh, Lives of the Monster Dogs. In my head, it's called Secret Lives of the Monster Dogs. I don't know. <laughs> I was that like, wait, it's a much was, better title. Actually. I thought it was Secret Lives. <laughs> um, but uh, it's this really trippy novel about uh, basically during World War II, it supposes that the Germans were able to successfully like DNA meld German shepherds with soldiers. And wow. so they created these like walking, talking German shepherds or whatever, right? And it's just, you know, it's just a classic Frankenstein's monster kind of situation where they are horrifying. They were bred to be these like awful people, but then they turn into like sophisticates and uh, kind of hide out in their 
German castle until this dude discovers them. It's just like one of just one of these books that I that have awesome. on the shelf. Yeah. I love it, and I, yeah. I talk about it a lot. You know, I'm like, oh, this, you know, it sounds like this book. Um, but I, I did not realize it had been 25 years Whoa. since I bought this book, but it has been. This is her first book in 25 years. Huh. Uh, it's called King Nix, N-Y-X. Uh, and you should, if you know anything about uh, Greek and Roman mythology, you probably pick up something right away. Nix was actually a female goddess. She's like Hades' daughter, niece, something like that, you know. I don't know. Sure. Basically, let's go with it. Queen of the night type thing. Um, so the King Nix is like it's it's a very feminist book. Uh, it's set in the early 1900s, and the setup is um woman, a first person narrator. Her husband is a dude who uh investigates the unexplainable of like Oh, frogs fell out of the sky in Novosibirsk in 1837. And, you know, these weird pheno weather phenomenon that nobody can explain. Um, and she has like hitched her wagon to this dude because she helped, he helped her escape this horrible situation. And like they're in poverty. And this rich dude who lives on an island invites them to come like finish the book on his island he's like this you know rich rich recluse or whatever but then once they get there lo and behold recluse guy shady dude does bad things disappearing women blah 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 and it's it's she's great she, it's very similar aesthetic as monster dogs like lots of like creepy semi you know, magical realism. You're not hundred percent sure if it's in their heads or if it's real. Um, great scene painter. Like it's a very like Gothic novel, like lots of, you know, good descriptions of the waves and the grasses and the trees of the forest and, you know, sort of just spooky and weird. Um, and then I would say that, you know, I, so for whatever reason, I feel like feminism is having this like weird, uh, it's like a deja vu moment where like a lot of things that I thought we had established as oh. like our pretty fucked up things about the patriarchy. Like, I didn't think these were like st things that we were still pointing to anymore. Like thought we, you know, wage gap and, you know, base, basic stuff. Right. You know, I thought we'd been talking about these since like the eighties and nineties. I've seen the like Barbie, you know, like the big Barbie speech or whatever is yeah. like, oh my God, America Ferrera. And I was like, you know, I mean, there I was a lot like, of discussion about that speech about like, uh, wasn't that kind of obvious? Right. That's that the thing stuff? is like, you know, people are like celebrating. I'm like, this is like 1990 stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. So kind of similarly, there's like a lot of these little setups where like, so they, the couple that goes to the island meets another couple that would be invited to the island. And it's like, just this, you know, pointing out that my husband never lets me finish a sentence or, you know, just how, yeah. how come people listen to men and not to women? I don't know. Um, hmm. You know, I feel like a woman could do this job, too. Uh, just, you know. Yeah. Just a little heavy handed more than right. I wanted. Um, a little too obvious. Like, like we could it, be subtler. Right, exactly. It's just like it was a it was a or little norm bit nuanced. Too much telling me, not yeah. enough showing me. Like, you know, right. when the dialogue is like, have you considered this feminist position? It's like, oh, okay, you know, I gotcha. Yep. But otherwise, um, I totally yeah, recommend I think it's a really it. fun, weird novel, you know, not much it actually reminds me a little bit of the like that Saray Walker uh vibe, oh, you know, yeah. it's like a little right. bit genre, but mostly a little bit, very, a little bit yep. gothic, a little bit dark, you know. So yeah, I, I mean, there's just a lot of island talk. I mean, I just talked about the Fury, which is set mostly on an island. People love the island. island. Yeah. This one is I an island forgot. in New York, by the way, on the St. Lawrence River at the top of New York. So it's not oh, I, wow. I was worried for a while it was a main island, but I went to clarify. Oh, a few. <laughs> uh oh, I think I was about to mention this book. That's coming out in a few months called The Fruit of the Dead. Mm. That is a modern or contemporary uh, Persephone Demeter retelling. Oh, yeah. Where one. the daughter goes 
to takes a babysitting job on a oh. private island <laughs> with this dude who's mm -hmm. a like pharmaceutical giant and he's developed a drug um that he's made all his money off of um that's like a painkiller ah and so the the girl's like just digging painkillers all the time and you know he's kind of the Hades character it's it's really good actually <laughs> i was gonna say i don't know you're selling this one but i got you it's really good because it's weird and it's it comes at the retelling subtly so if you know it's the retelling you're like oh that's that that's what's happening right, right, that's right, that's right. happening but sometimes you could just be like this is just weird and great and good and it's like the writing's nice and um but I think that is an island off the coast of Maine. <laughs> but anyway, the what you were saying about the feminist stuff reminded me of this book I just read over the weekend called oh. Mercury by Amy Jo Burns. Oh. Which I what I thought it was fine. Like I Mercury. didn't I, I definitely didn't love it, but I think I'm gonna be in the minority here. Like I think Is it about the element, or the planet, the god. No, it's, it's about a town called Mercury in oh. Pennsylvania. Hmm. Like okay. Kind of fading Rust Belt town. Mm. Not the messenger of the gods, or no. I w I wish there was something more going There's on. No there, but I can't say that there is there anything. It's not maybe that I just didn't think of. Didn't pick up on. Is it the smallest town around? I guess maybe it's a small town. Yeah, yeah. Mercury is the smallest planet. Yeah. So the it's about a family of roofers and this young woman who rolls into town. And quickly falls in love with one of the sons mm. and gets pregnant at 18. And so they get married. Mm. And so it's like kind of a decade in their lives of like, you know, 18 through 28, let's say. Right. Is it so right like now? This, no, it's in the 90s. Mm. Okay. And it's like a family drama, story of a marriage. It's quiet, I would say. I would describe it as... Uh, not much quiet. happens. No shoot There's em ups. Not a lot of action, but it's like every emotion. It's like every encounter, every thing that happens is like imbued with so much emotion. Like she's so, you know, he's looking at her and she's looking at him. And oh my God, it's so weighted with blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, and you're just like, oh my God. Like, I don't think every encounter in our lives are like that weighted with emotion. It's just well, like a I lot. Hope not. I hope not. And there's like very little joy. You know, so you're like, why? Why are you staying? Like, everyone just seems really unhappy. Mm -hmm. And the men in this book are just characterized as like, we love them because they're like handsome and they're good roofers, but they're terrible in every other way. And being married to them is m makes these women miserable. And like, mm -hmm. being their wives and sisters and daughters is like miserable and men suck, you know? And it's just kind of like, well, why are you yeah. not a lot like, of agency then i guess huh it just makes it seem like all marriages suck and it's like no like, yeah, well well like it's know. so hard to be a wife it's so hard to be a mom which i get like there are definitely those moments but there there was just no development of like but there was joy too and like they're they're good right. guys for this reason it's and just like, supposed to be a portrait of 90s misery kind of yeah yeah i so you know i think that's um uh, someone you know so i think a portrait of contemporary misery like makes some sense right like mm -hmm. you're taking a polaroid of something that maybe people don't know about and it's like hey like this is a commentary on what's going on now you said it 30 years in the past and it's like well what are we supposed right. to do with that you know like there was right. a time right. in the past where it sucked okay is this you're saying like we haven't gotten past this or you know right if i'm do reading you just not feel like writing about phones or what's going on it seems like they didn't want to write about phones i think that's whenever shit's set in the 90s now that's yeah. my first assumption is they couldn't figure out how to integrate technology and didn't want right. to write about it oh hey the 90s the last decade and oh i happened to be a teenager back then so isn't totally. this a great time to write yes yeah i agree i you know if, if i'm reading historical fiction like it, there has to be some through line to like and you can get something out of it like or there's got to be a story you know right. like we yes. need uh we need some rising action here you know yeah yeah um, i mean there's supposedly a murder but it's not 
that interesting. <laughs> well, in Maine, so, we think, would refer to them, you know, as Rufus. Rufus. Yes, Ru- you would. You I mean, that, so that's that the thing. Like, I think this is the type of book that many, 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 many people like because I think it's a lot like Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keene, which I actually didn't read. I read her other book, which I thought, again, was fine because it was like uh-huh. the story of a marriage, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And, um, and I, it's not, I think a little bit like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, which I also didn't love, oh, but I'm like yeah. the only person in the world who didn't love it. Right. And I thought it was fine again. Like, okay. Yeah, it was fine. Um, but it's, I think these like very character driven relationship driven stories. Right. Yeah. And I guess maybe I just need a little more action in my, my Yeah, story. maybe. I know. You know. I do think that uh, everybody sharing their feelings with one another can be compelling for certain readers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, a little bite-sized uh, review here of a book where everybody shared their feelings with each other is, uh-huh. I don't know, if, uh, you might have given this book to Gus. I can't remember, but it is. The, I did, I believe. Right? It's the yes. uh, Demon in the Wood a shadow and bone graphic novel by Lee Bardugo and uh, penciled by Danny Pendergast, uh, which Gus apparently just put in a drawer and forgot about because I was looking. Forgot about. Well, you know, he's not a reader, um, but he put it in a drawer and forgot about it, I think. Um, yeah. And so I had we hopes were, for him for that one. We, we were doing a little spring cleaning and uh, I was like, oh, what's this book? And so I am a Lee Bardugo completionist. I don't think I've, I think I've read everything by her. So I was like, oh, I'm going to read this. And it, the story is, I would say, negligible. Um, okay. There's lots of pretty pictures. Um, it's uh-huh. one of those graphic novels where like it takes like 10 pages for something to happen. And if you wrote it up as a short story, it would be like 3000 words, maybe, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so it's, it's pretty. And it's a story of like, you know, a young darkling, like for people who have um, read all the shadow and bone books, like basically the arch bad guy as a child, you know, providing some uh you know shading in the uh <clears throat> extra cool. parts of his character or whatever but uh is <laughs> not not i don't know a lot of people get killed and stuff and it's hard to find the good guy um so you know for close completionists yeah I, but this is definitely not like one of those like the graceling um uh, graphic novel i was like right. oh, this is so great like what a cool way to illustrate all these things i've only had in my head in this one, I was like, yeah, I mean, I've seen the movie and I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Adult. So not necessary to the. I wouldn't like, you know, I just, it's not like it, it doesn't also, it doesn't have like some redeeming message like a lot of YA books uh-huh. have or whatever. You know, it's just yeah. like, what if it was sucky and you decided to kill everybody? It's like, mm, okay. Well. Okay. Sure. Uh, I actually read a YA book. Oh, did you? What did you read? Yeah. I read That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. Oh, I saw something about that. I can't remember what it was, though. Yeah, I believe it just came out this earlier, maybe t- maybe tomorrow, oh. maybe last week. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a thriller, mm-hmm. and it's told in alternating voices. And one is, it starts out with a young girl who wakes up in a ditch on the side of the road, and she's really banged up, and a cop car pull, like happens to come along and pull over and she realizes she has no idea who she is. She doesn't know what her name is. She has no memories Ooh, of what happened. An amnesia story. Yes. So the cop takes her in and brings her back to the station and, you know, gets her cleaned up and a man arrives and he's like, I'm looking for my daughter. I'm from a few towns away. She hasn't come home. I'm blah, blah, blah. And like, he describes this girl, someone who's exactly like this girl. And the cop does his due diligence and the guy has like, a you know, they drive together to his house. He has a birth certificate. It's like, yeah, it's got to be her. He has pictures of them on his phone. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So the cop drops her off and they're in this cabin in the mountains. And, um, but the whole time you're sort of like, there's like sketchy stuff's happening with the guy. Like he forgets, you know, an allergy and like, you're just kind of like something fishy is going on. How would you not know that? Yeah, exactly. Right. 
And and then the other voice is a high school senior, a boy whose girlfriend has gone missing and she's been gone for like five Ah. weeks. And the cop in charge of the investigation is not doing a good job. And he just thinks the boyfriend did it because, you know, the boyfriend always does it. Right. And the boyfriend's like trying to prove his innocence by finding out what happened to his girlfriend. Mm. And so the whole time you're, you know, you're just not sure if the girl you're hearing from is his girlfriend could be, could not be. Don't not ruin gonna, it. Not going to ruin it. And, uh, it was, yeah. So you're, I was left guessing until the end pretty much. I thought it was pretty Did good. Did it involve a, Oh my God, I suddenly remember moment. She does. Rem- it wasn't annoying though, okay. because you didn't feel, I did not feel manipulated by it. I mean, you sort of knew that she was going to remember who she was in the end and that would, but like the moments come like the boyfriend figuring out what happened because he's not like with her, right? They're, they're operating on two right. parallel, but separate storylines. Um, we didn't need her in for like, he's getting closer. And so their meeting up kind of coincided with her remembering. Okay. That's good. Yeah, so I, it worked for me. Good. All right. Um, let's see. I also, I'm going to just mention these two books. I haven't I've read maybe a third of one and a fifth of the other, uh, just as a kind of a follow-up. One is the George Harrison book. Oh, yeah. I'm about a third through it. Um, it's about what I thought. I've learned a couple of things. Um, this is Philip Norman. Philip Norman, he's basically, he's done Paul's book, he's done John's book, he's done Hendrix, right. he's done Clapton. Um, very familiar. I've read a couple of the other ones. Um, is it, you know, I think the Beatles nerds will buy it. I think one of the things about George Harrison is he just kind of kept to himself and he was, you know, maybe it gets more interesting post Beatles because, you know, it'll diverge from all the stories I already know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But like he had a nice, happy family who loved each other and he was pretty well adjusted and kind of thought John and Paul were sort of dicks and hung out a lot with Ringo and was great at guitar. <laughs> like, just, yeah, you know, it, it just seems like it. that bio could be shorter. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not as long, like the Lennon one's twice as long, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's the McCartney one's probably three times as long. Um he, you know, it's just there are a lot of times where sometimes it's feel like Philip's kind of like, and George was also there at that important moment that you've heard mm. about 50 times. Yeah. <laughs> he was watching from the sidelines when right. it happened. I've done all this research already yeah. that George was at these events. And remember when and this guy died? Remember when Stu Sutcliffe died and John was really bummed about it? George was bummed too. You know, yeah. George was totally bummed. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but so, I, you know. But, you know, he's a good writer and I'm happy to read it. It's, you know, I'm reading it 50 pages at a time. Um, and then I also got this other book, uh, Listen on Music, Sound, and Us by uh, Michael Faber, I think. It's, it's M-I-C-H-E-L. So he doesn't say Michelle, does he? But he might. I don't know. Is it the Michelle Faber, Faber who wrote D? Yes, totally. It? Yes. Yeah, which it's I Michelle. Do. It's yeah, Michelle. It is Michelle. So yeah. I didn't realize it was him when someone gave it, when I think Kristen gave me this for Christmas. I think. I don't know. I'm bad at keeping all that stuff straight. Sorry, dear, if that was you. Um, but so I is, should know, but I don't remember either. It is a you know, kind of a follow-on to like the Daniel Levitin and Susan Rogers books about like how we listen to music and you know, he has done all that research. But he is fundamentally a fiction writer and yeah, you know, journalist yes. and journalist. You know, it's I, not like I he only does fiction books. or whatever. But um, so he comes at it like really personally. And he spends like the whole first part telling me who the book is not for. Mm, and, okay. You know, how everything that I know about music is wrong. But I've already read the Levitin yeah. and Rogers. So it's mostly like no, he's re going over all this ground. But also he has tinnitus, and so like he has like it's all fueled. Oh. Part of it is like fueled by this anger at the world for his tinnitus because he like loves music and you know. So I haven't, like I said, I've only gotten like I don't know, I'm 50 pages in or something. But it's very interesting to see 
like a non sort of academic come at this topic in a little different way. So I don't know. I think if like you're a punk fan or you're like an outsider music fan, I think it's particularly good for you. Like, you know, he's one of these dudes that listens to like Brahms and then the talking heads and then Carly Simon and then, you know, Brian, Eno. it just, you know, he's all over the place. And so I hmm. think it's like, a, it's like a music lover's screed about how nobody listens to music like we do. I don't know. A lot of bio. Okay. Really Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. For a music nerd friend, it's, you know, sure. something to consider. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to preview something I'm going to talk about next time, hopefully. Preview? Oh. Because I'm going to make you jealous. I just started the new Kelly Link novel that's what? coming out in March. You have the Kelly Link novel? Yeah. Mm, okay. And it's so good. I just what read the called? first The Book of Love. Oh. And it's excellent. I started it last night. I maybe read 50 pages or so. And it's wildly entertaining. She just, I love her. I mean, I think when I was a kid, I thought this is the writer I'm going to grow up to be because I really loved fairy tales. And she's like this, she just she's writes like, contemporary fairy tales. She like, does. She's the best at it. It's amazing. She's the best at it. And they're never I'm jealous like, of it. I'm like, I want to write this way. or weird. No. They're like, oh, this is like, you know, yes. Ansel and Gretel. But now it's fucking crazy. Right. And she's like a little bit punk and like a little bit. Yeah. I like her a lot. She's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so but this is the first novel, right? Last time we talked it's about her it, we first were, novel. Yeah, that's right. Cause she, we looked it up and it's all stories. Yeah. So it's 600 pages. So oh. I hope to finish it by next time. Well, I have two weeks. Around. The first novel. Dang. Yeah. Go split that baby in two. I know, but I'm excited. You can have Great. it after. All right. Um, I have lots of other books to be excited about, but I won't talk about them now. Okay. I've already talked about a lot Fine. of books. Um, and we also, for people who are wondering, are working on some events, which I know you've been wondering about. We do have the Newport, Newburyport Literary Festival in April, but we'll probably do something before then. There's some talk of a salon. Hannah's very excited about the idea of a salon at the Hastings House. So yeah, we'll make that happen. And uh, in general, if you have any ideas for cool and awesome things that we should be doing, by all means. Email Let us. Let us know. It's the email address again, Hannah? The email address is staff at realbookshop.com. Or staff yeah. at bookshopofbeverlyfarms.com. That's uh, what I mean. Go to the same place. Doesn't they matter. do go to the same place. Uh, Real Bookshop is just a weird shortened URL that we happen to own because we bought it with the store. Oh, yes. But, you know, it was it's yeah. nice and shorter to type. Um, <laughs> I've seen Hannah. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but we were, uh, badgering people to leave us, uh, reviews and ratings uh, on various podcast platforms. Did we get one? Someone left a very nice review in November on. No way. I missed it. Yeah, on the it, Apple. It was busy. That's so exciting. So that was very, Thank very you. Nice. Thank you to whoever that was. I don't think you're related to us. So that's amazing. Wow. Um, there it's is really one special. from there is one from not Nola there as well that <laughs> I think people might see through if they have I'm heard of our technically former. not related to us. <laughs> no, but we did not pay blood. her for some <laughs> standard amount of time. I think uh, that probably makes her not a neutral third party, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but if should you want to do that, we would very much appreciate it. Um, thanks to Rick Johansson, we are still putting these up on YouTube. But Rick, if they keep getting like nine views every two weeks, I can assure you that I will stop putting them up there. So, you know, when you listen to the, uh, any recommendations you might want to uh, give us for increasing our YouTube, this, I don't know, maybe marketing at all. Maybe we should try. Uh, but we, yeah, we got to work on our keywords. We'll see what happens. Uh, so okay. till next time, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.